I'm going to answer the questions that was raised from the last session at the end and uh, so we're going to go into this topic and this is very important because if we want to enter God's perfect plan we need to clear the uh, the influence of sins and other people so that we'll follow God so that our life can follow the perfect plan of God first we need to realize the destructiveness of sins now why do many people sin they, they say well God will forgive me so it doesn't matter if I sin I, I ask God to forgive me and then I'm okay now it's true God will forgive but there is always a destructiveness of sin and there are consequences of sin 1st Corinthians chapter 10 verse 9 nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did and in one day 23,000 fell nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents so when the Israelites were in the wilderness they committed adultery and they tempted God and then they were destroyed by serpents and 23,000 people died on one day so that shows how God's punishment can come and God doesn't like sin uh, even though many times God did not punish us all the time but it but it's still it's God's nature that he hates sin and then that was in the Old Testament but in the New Testament too there's also the punishment of uh, of God in Acts chapter 5 verse 3 but Peter said Ananias because Ananias and Sapphira they were a couple in the early church and many people at that time sold their houses and gave to the church and this couple also sold their houses their house but they were not willing to give all the money to the church now if they didn't give all the money to the church is fine but they told a lie and said and said that uh, I have given you all the money uh, that I got and that was a lie and God punished them instantly but Peter said Ananias why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself and then in verse 4 you have not lied to men but to God then Ananias hearing these words fell down and breathed his last so great fear came upon all those who heard these things so here it says that Ananias said that uh, this is all the money and then Peter said why did you lie and you're not lying to men but you're lying to the Holy Spirit and then God struck Ananias and he fell to the ground and then great fear came upon all those who heard this thing so the people had great fear of God now many people say uh, well God doesn't do that all the time uh, many times they didn't do it so it's okay to sin now even though God doesn't do it it doesn't mean God uh, is okay with sin it just means that God gives us time if God does that many people would have died but God did not do that all the time so what hap what has happened before told us that that God can do it again so I hope that we'll say yes sins are destructive you know since I experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998 an evangelist from South America Argentina Carlos Anacondia came to Hong Kong and he laid hand on me at that time I've been a pastor for 15 years already and he laid hand on me instantly I felt great power enter me and I felt great love so strong was the love that I cried for a long time I was touched by the Holy Spirit I cried for a long time and I said I didn't know I can experience God like that and it changed my life totally I had I spent more time praying to God and loving God and serving God and I have motivation and then when I pray for people many people experience great changes and when I realized the destructiveness of sins and how God can use us I really put effort into uh, turning away from sins repenting and hating sins it's very important to hate sins 
and turn away from sins and and God has shown me the way how to overcome all sins because many people say it's too difficult and I said it's difficult too but then uh, God has shown me a way how to overcome sins as soon as the sins appear and the first thing is to realize that sins are very destructive sins are very destructive and then there is a man who had 38 years of sickness and Jesus healed him and after Jesus healed him he said this to him in John 5 14 see you are you are well again stop sinning or something worse may happen to you so Jesus said to him stop sinning don't sin anymore or something worse may happen to you now what something worse can happen it can be the coming back of the sickness it can be something else it can be attacked by evil spirit it can be that his life would will, will, uh, will be ruined more whatever it is something worse may happen so we need to realize that Jesus warned him Jesus also warns us but most people don't pay attention to this Bible verse they would just say I asked Jesus to forgive me and then things will be okay but I want to say we are saved by grace through faith when we trust in Jesus Christ we are forgiven and we are given eternal life but when we sin even though when we repent God will forgive us but there are consequences of sin it can destroy our life it can destroy our reputation it can destroy our ministry and everything and sowing to the flesh will reap destruction Galatians 6 8 for he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life so when we sow to the flesh that means when we follow the flesh when we follow the desire of the sinful nature we will reap corruption our whole life will go through corruption and destruction and then he who sows to the spirit will reap everlasting life and also reward from God so I hope that we take this seriously that when we sow to the flesh we can reap corruption and destruction and their destructiveness of sin we'll come to that later and also we need to understand that carnal mind is an enemy of God Romans 8 7 because the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God nor indeed can be what it says is that the car carnal mind the flesh the mind of the flesh the sinful mind is an enmity against God is an enemy of God it hates God our sinful nature hates God so when people are about to sin for instance they are about to commit adultery they say uh, they say God leave me alone now leave me alone alone I don't want to face you now let me commit adultery and later I will come back to you so that mind is rebelliousness rebellious against God doesn't want to obey God and it's not subject to the law nor can it be so it cannot be subject to the law because it has no ability so we know that our flesh we all have the sinful nature I have the sinful nature too the point is how we take care of the sinful nature how we uh, take care of that by the help of God uh, we all have the sinful nature and then we need to take care of the sinful nature by the help of God so that we're not controlled by the sinful nature because the sinful nature is against God and the Bible also says breaking one law breaks the whole law James 2.10 For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. Now what it means is that if we break one law then we break all the laws. Some people say how, how can that be? The reason is for instance if we hate someone when we hate someone it causes us to have anger it causes us to have rebelliousness against God we did not want to obey God and then it uh, affect the relationship with people so it will affect 
our relationship with ourselves, with people, and with God. Any sin, like uh, some people have uh, depression, they're very sad. When they're sad, they feel bad about themselves. They have low self-image. And so also they would have problem relating to people and they have problem relating to God. So depression will affect their themselves and the relationship with other people and with God. Any sin will affect the whole person. Adultery will make the person feel very dirty, guilty. It will destroy the marriage. It will destroy their own life. It destroy their relationship with God. So any sin will affect the whole person. Now, the Bible has told us to follow perfection, but some people say that's impossible. How can we have perfection? I would I would say yes, we cannot be perfect, but we can pursue perfection. First Timothy six fourteen, to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ that the Bible has told us to try to keep this command without spot or blame, without any blemish that we try to follow all the laws of the Lord. As human, we can never be perfect, but we can try our best to be perfect with the help of God. We can never be perfect, but whenever a sinful thought comes up, we can take care of it right away if we know that it's destructive and we know that it would destroy our lives. Now, for me, after experience the Holy Spirit, I know that any sin will take away the anointing and take away God's uh, pleasure on me that He He's not happy with me, and it will take away opportunities of ministry. It will ruin my life and ruin my ministry, ruin my family. So I pay very uh, great attention not to let any sin affect me, because I want to treasure my life. I see that after experience the Holy Spirit. I can do so much for God. I want to treasure my life. I want to keep my life in the best condition so that I can follow God's perfect plan. So how do we overcome sins? First, to overcome sins, we sincerely repent of our sins. That's the first step and most important step. And believe that God really forgive us. 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all right unrighteousness. When we confess our sins sincerely, when we are truly sorry, God will for sure forgive us. Now, some people repent, they repent like this. They might have a mistress uh, affair, extramarital affair, and they say, okay, today I repent, but tomorrow I'll go to see the woman again. That is not repentance. Repentance is to say that sins are destructive. I must hate sin. I must hate that sin. It's going to destroy my life. I'm going to turn my back to the sin and, and really say no to the sins. And when we say, yes, Lord, please help me to overcome my sin and please forgive me. God is very happy to forgive us. Now, some people say, I want to overcome my anger, but every day the anger comes back. The point is, if we have the weakness of having the anger come back, then we repent and try to overcome the anger again. It's different from someone having repentance and say, I'm going to yell at my wife in a moment after I pray. That is not repentance. So when we repent, we still might sin again, but we want to say no to when, as soon as the sinful thought comes up, and then we say, I want to stop the sin. I don't want to let the sin control me. Then that is uh, true repentance, that we say sins are destructive. I want to stop my sins right away instead of letting it control my life. Or for instance, if we have bad relationship with our spouse and then we have this anger or despise of, of our spouse, then we say, this will destroy my life. I want to say sorry to, to, uh, to God and I want to say no to the sin. And, and when we confess our sin, God will for sure forgive us. Some people will say, what if I really don't want to really sincerely repent? I still like my sin. Then I would say, God said, Jesus said, that the worst thing will happen to you. That, and that it will affect the family, affect the person, affect his ministry, affect his future, affect 
his provision from God, that he can lose the provision from God. And finally, a person can lose salvation. So we don't want to say sins are okay, sins are terrible. If we have any kind of sin, we want to say no. We are not saved by holiness. We are not saved by following God, you know, obeying everything. We are saved by grace through faith. But when we are saved by grace through faith, we know that God hates sins. We want to say no to sins. And God will re forgive a repentant heart. Psalm 51, 17. This is the Psalm of David after he has committed adultery and murder. And then here he wrote, The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. This, O God, you will not despise. So what God wants is a broken spirit. A contrite heart is a heart of repentance, of being sorry for our sins. So when we have a broken and contrite heart, God will not despise. When a person is really sorry for his sins, God will not despise. So I hope that we'll all say, Yes, Lord, I want to say no to my sins. I want to hate sins. I really feel sorry for my sins. I don't want to let my sins control me. Then God is very happy. And I use an illustration to illustrate God's forgiveness. He, he keeps His promise like the electric lights. The electric lights also, always follow the rule of el electricity. When you turn on the light, the, la the lamp, the light will turn on. It will always follow the rule. And it's the same for God. If someone is truly sorry for his sin, when he asks God for, to forgive him, God will for sure forgive. At the same time, I want to say this. If a person is thinking of, I'm going to commit adultery in a moment, and he, sa he says sorry, but he was thinking, in the next moment, I'm going to commit adultery. That is not repentance. And he can lose his salvation. So we have to be very careful with us. Uh, a sinful plan, the plan to continue to sin. And Ephesians 4, 26 and 27 talk about don't give the devil a foothold. Don't let the devil come into your house, into your life. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. So here, uh, Paul was talking about sins. In your anger, do not sin. And do not let the sun go down while you're still angry. When you're still angry, don't. When you're still angry, don't uh, uh, stop the anger so that you don't give the devil a foothold, a place that the devil will step into the house, step into our life. So we know that sins are destructive, and it can uh, give the devil a foothold, and then. Uh, the devil will come into our life and destroy everything. The devil came to destroy and to kill. And with the help of God, we are more than conquerors. Romans 8.37 In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through Him who loved us, that we can conquer, overcome our sins with the help of God. And then we will talk about how we can overcome sins. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> five steps to victory. Now we talk about that five steps to victory when we talk about how not to be affected by people. Here it talks about how to overcome sins. For first, be aware of any sin or anything that affects our life. So be aware that, oh, we have sinful thoughts. We have the thought to be angry, to yell at someone, the thought to be depressed. Depression is also a sin. Depression, worry, are also sins because this this are lack of trust in God that we say God is not helping me so we are unhappy so uh, be aware of any sinful thoughts in our heart and then believe that any sin or negative things are destructive anything negative is destructive apply biblical principles to the problems what does the Bible tell me to do so what does the Bible tell me to do to handle my sins uh, the Bible tells me that sins are destructive. And then when we repent, God is for sure to forgive us. And then uh, God tells us to forgive our enemies, to, to love them, to pray for them, to forgive other people, to uh, put down our anger, put down our frustration, our depression. The Bible has told us that. And the Bible told us to have strength from the Lord, to have strength 
to have strength when we come to the Lord. And we, then we choose to obey God, choose to obey God and choose to say no to sins. That has happened to me many, many times. That uh, I remember many instances uh, when I had negative thinking, I have frustration, I say, Lord, help me to put down those frustrations. It's okay. What people did is okay. I, it's their problem. I don't have to carry the burdens. I don't have to be angry. Or when I saw a beautiful woman, I say, Lord, help me not to think, not to see, turn my head away and not to see, don't, not to be tempted. And or some, uh, I remember before that I despised someone and then the, th the Lord reminds me and then I say, Lord, help me not to despise the person, but to bless the person. Or some people I say they're terrible, terrible people. I don't like them and then I, I'm aware of that and then I ask God to help me and then I choose to appreciate them and to be nice to them, to bless them because God tells us to love people. And uh, what I wrote down here at the bottom, we can overcome sins by stopping the sinful thoughts before they became, become action. So become before the sinful thoughts become action. We can stop the sinful thoughts. That's the key to victory. Now, sins can destroy. What can sins can destroy? It can destroy a relationship with God. It can destroy a relationship with people. It can destroy a marriage, a job, a ministry, and reputation. It can destroy a future and a whole life. A whole life. Everything can break down. In a seminary, a professor told us about students of the seminary who became pastors and then they became drunkards and a, and a professor went to visit those people they become drunkards and homeless on the street it can happen even to pastors it can destroy the whole life and I know some people commit adultery and went into prison some Christians even pastors so it can happen to us so I pray that you will remember sins are very destructive and it can destroy God's plan for our life. God has a wonderful plan and then if we sin, our plan, the plans of God will be destroyed and our eternal life. When people continue to stay in sin, they can lose eternal life. And sometimes there is no turning back when we sin. Sometimes. Now, we can ask God to forgive us, but sometimes there's no turning back. For instance, someone is put into prison. Sometimes the person's marriage is totally broken. The spouse went away, the children went away, or the people in the church don't trust them anymore, and the whole life is destroyed. So I hope that we all realize that sins are very, very destructive. And we can say that, yes, even if I improve 1% a day, even if I overcome a sin a day, and I'm improving. Of course, when we overcome one sin doesn't mean, okay, I can commit the next sin. We'll say any sin, any sin is destructive. So, but when we have improvement, we can encourage ourselves. Today, I've overcome some sins, so I can overcome more and more sins. I can have victory. Now, I want to talk a little bit about how to help our members to overcome sins. Sometimes our members, um, they continue in sin and it's hard for them to overcome the sins. What can we do? First, we can have teachings to tell people that sins are very destructive. Sin can destroy the whole life, the marriage, the work, they can lose the job, they can lose the future, they can lose the, the plan of God in their life, and they can lose their eternal life. And uh, do you want to uh, give your life a second chance? Do you want to have a normal life and have an abundant life, the life that is blessed by God? And some people say, yes, I want to, but I have no strength. Some people have no support system. They have no friend, they have no one to help them. And then we can 
if someone really needs someone to help, we can assign someone in the church to help that person, to pray with that person every day, to encourage the person every day, to read the Bible together every day, sometimes maybe online, uh, to pray with the person, to read the Bible together, and to check with the person. Now the person, if he's, he wants to overcome his sins, he has to be willing to have someone to help him. So he would say, oh, today I have overcome this sins and that sin, and then today I have given in to this certain sin, please. And then he asks God to forgive him, and then how can we overcome the next sin? Sometimes we need to analyze what happened when we commit a sin. Sometimes people commit a sin because they were in anger, they were in frustration, and then they do things to with anger or they commit adultery because they they were in anger sometimes because people are lonely they're lonely they have no strength and then we need to have, build up friendship with people and a healthy friendship with christians so that we can encourage each other pray together gather together and encourage each other that would help many christians to overcome the sin and also, we can give people a picture. In the future, if you follow God, your life can go higher and higher. You can bless other people. Do you want to do that? Do you want your life to go higher? If you continue to sin and fall and then repent and then sin again, that way your life will be destroyed. But if you overcome your sin and continue to go higher and higher and obey God, then your life can go higher and higher. So are you willing to make the best use of your life, that your life can go higher. And God likes you. When God likes you, then He'll give you every blessing you need and your life will go higher and higher. So for me, I really treasure my life. And I, I want to say that too. Pastors really need to treasure our lives. I've known pastors who steal money. I have come across pastors who steal you stole money. I have come across pastors who are controlled by anger and also that decide to control people and uh, full of anger in a ministry, in a message, uh, lack of love. I've seen pastors like that. And then I would describe this. If we are ministers or people who serve God, and we build on the foundation of God. Actually, this applies to every Christian. We all build on the foundation of Jesus Christ. So we build on the foundation of Jesus Christ and we build a building. But when we sin, we break down the wall again. So everything we do will be broken down. Then it's a waste of time and energy and we lose God's rewards and we lose God's favor. So, for us who serve God, it's very important that we treasure our life. And when we have the strength of God, then we can go better, higher and higher, and we can serve God more, and we have more strength, we can do more things for God. But if we have no strength, if we are weak, then our life will go higher and higher, I mean lower and lower, we will sin, our life will go lower and lower, and our life will be destroyed. It applies for pastors, for any people. And I've known uh, that some people, their life has gone so low. They, they still want to say they are Christians, but they are so controlled by adultery, so controlled by anger and fights in the family that the, the whole life is going downhill. It takes extra effort to help people like this. And I hope we all will appreciate how God created our life. Our lives are very precious. We need to really treasure our life and make the best of our life. And then our life can go higher and higher. And then we can do great things for God. And then we will enjoy life and we'll have strength and we'll uh, enjoy everything we do for God. So I hope uh, we all can have victory in God. And, you know, I find that sins can come in in many many different ways one time i prayed for some people and experienced the holy spirit i was very happy and then now it's not wrong to be happy but then in my heart there was some pride so immediately i say lord 
I want to be happy because of you. It's your work. It's not my work. So Lord, I thank you that it's your work that you have done these wonderful things to these people. Thank God to give me the opportunity to bless these people. Help me not to be proud. So sometimes I dislike some people because they hurt people. And then I say, Lord, uh, I have this dislike for this person. If I let this dislike stay in my heart, then it can destroy my life. So I want to make the best use of my life. I don't want anyone, any sinner to affect my life. And also I want to pay attention to my own way that I can be negative to people too. And I say, Lord, help me to be positive all the time. Now, if you have questions, you can ask right away with the WhatsApp. And then I can answer the questions. And right now I'm going to answer a question uh, that I received earlier. The question was, um, let me see. I'm trying to find the questions. Uh, Washington, you can send the questions again. Okay, I, I found a question now. How can we improve uh, if we have negative side of life? Uh, the same thing as I said is that whenever we notice any negative things in our life, whether it's emotion, thinking, anger, or frustration or pride or laziness or dislike of someone or marriage problem anything like that we have to say yes Lord I want to pay attention to those things I want to be aware so use the five steps uh, of victory I'm aware of this problem uh, I am uh, for instance someone is not nice to the spouse I'm aware of this problem and then it's destructive and I've apply biblical principle God wants us to be nice to our to our spouse and um, pray for forgiveness please forgive me and then give me strength so that I will choose to be nice to my spouse choose to say good things choose to thank them choose to be nice to them and build up the relationship and communicate with the spouse to talk with the spouse to communicate okay and then the next question is are we saved by grace or by works we do? Can we work out our salvation? Now, I want to say this. Work out our salvation doesn't mean our work brings salvation. It means after the salvation, we work out, you know, to bring the fruit of the salvation to accomplish the work of God in our lives, to work out, to let salvation change our life. It's very clear in the Bible that we are saved by grace through faith, not by ourselves and not by works. It's very clear. But when we are saved, we always bear fruit. This is the result of faith. When there is real faith, there is repentance and also realizing that God is holy and God likes us to be holy. And then there is a desire to follow God. And if a person sins, the Holy Spirit will remind us that we are sinning and then we will repent and ask God to forgive us. If the person doesn't choose to repent, then there is something wrong with his spiritual life. So people need to learn that sins are destructive. Sins are destructive. It can destroy our life. So we need to repent and then say no to sins and say, Lord, help me, help me to put down any kind of sin. So we are saved by grace. Works are the result of salvation, are the fruit of salvation. And then, how can we be aware that we are affected by people? Well, uh, if we pay attention, we'll, it's very easy to be aware. For instance, someone just yelled at us and then we notice that we are very sad. And then we ask ourselves, why am I so sad? Oh, he just yelled at me and then I'm very sad. So we become aware. So we need to learn to be aware of ourselves. And also when we are aware of ourselves, we can learn to be 
uh, raising up our joy by praising God all the time. God is so good. Hallelujah. God is loving. God is loving us all the time. God loves us all the time. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. That way we have joy all the time. Then we are aware, are aware of the joy. That, oh Lord, I have this joy coming up. When I've come to you, I have this joy. Thank you, Lord, for this joy. So then we are aware of the joy. And when we stay in joy all the day long, now after experience of the Holy Spirit, I have this, this desire to stay in joy all day long. And then when I notice that I don't have the joy, then I will say, what happened? Something has gone wrong. And then I will try to overcome it. I try to work on it. So I, uh, I hope that we become aware of what's going on in our heart. Like if we dislike our spouse <clears throat> or dislike a church member or dislike our co-worker, we ask ourselves, what is wrong? Now, maybe there's something wrong with the person. Then we need to pray for forgiveness and ask God to help us to be nice to the person. And we need to overcome the problem too. You know, we're not affected by a person, but we want to find ways to overcome the problem. Is to communicate by asking questions. I've noticed that there is something happening between us. And uh, I like to work on it. Do you like to work on it too? I'm sorry for what I've done wrong. Please forgive me. I'm willing to change. Uh, can we work on the relationship? So when we notice that there is something wrong, some, that we are unhappy, uh, that we have burdens. Now, many ministers have burdens for the ministry because the ministry belongs to the Lord. We want to, don't want to live in burdens, under burdens. We want to live in joy, serve in joy that we are so happy to serve God. Hallelujah! Today I spend long hour teaching and I say, Lord, I'm so happy to be teaching, to share the Word of God, and I enjoy it. Instead of saying, oh, uh, there's so much more to do and, and uh, it's hard for people to learn, you know, I can say different things. But instead of that, I can say, God is happy with what I'm doing. So that's encouragement for ministers that whatever we do for God, God is very happy. God is happy with what we do today. And for everyone who stay and pay attention to the learning, to the teaching, so uh, we thank God for that and God is very happy with you. So every day we do that, then we have positive spirits when we serve God. And whenever I do any little thing for God, God is very happy. And then if I fail in anything and I ask God to forgive me and then God will forgive me. Okay, I see that there is another question. Uh, how can one break the bondage of slavery in the spiritual world? Um, now this question, uh, do you mean that someone always feel he's a slave? Or is it uh, under the bondage of evil spirit? Okay, now I will answer both of this. First, the spirit of slavery, feeling that I'm a slave. I'm not important. I'm not a child of God. I'm just a slave of God. If someone feels like that, then the mind, there's some wrong teaching. We need to change the teaching, the, the mind. Now, actually, for every problem, there is a problem of the mind. So we need to believe and read the Bible words that we are children of God, we are adopted children of God, that we have the, all the heritage of the children of God. Everything God has promised, I can get all these things, all these wonderful blessings. Then we, every day I declare, I'm a child of God, God is happy with me, and then it will gradually take away the, uh, the spirit of bondage, that we don't feel that we are under bondage. We feel that we are happy, we are a child of God, that God likes. Now, we, every day, as I said, the prayer of worship, the prayer of grace, and the prayer of uh, interactive prayer. Every day we say, God is loving me, God is happy with me, God is blessing me, God wants to do great things in my life, God, God likes the things I've done for Him. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. So we can 
uh, have this prayer and then it fill us with joy. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Because you're happy with me, I can be happy with myself. I can put down all my burdens. I can be a free child enjoying God. Okay? And then uh, slavery uh, of the evil spirit. Now, the evil spirit, um, actually, when the evil spirit find that we have sins, they would have a foothold in our life. In order to overcome the... Oh, let me see. Is it life? Okay, now uh, it's still okay because OBS says that there is some problem. Okay, now it's okay. Now, um, now if someone is under the power of the evil spirit, what can we do? There are a few things together. One, first start to believe in God's love first. That's most important. And praise God more. Believe that God is loving me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That gives us strength and also a close relationship with God. And the close relationship with God will drive away the evil spirit. The first thing is to believe in God's love. God is loving me. God is blessing me. God is helping me. God really wants to help me. Really, God wants to set me free. So believe all that. And, and to thank God for that. Oh Lord, I thank you because you care about us. You want to set me free. So that relationship with God in love and freedom will take away the bondage. The second is to find out where we have negative thoughts and negative lifestyle because these are the foothold that the devil came into our life. So we pay attention to our life and say, do I have problem with my wife? Do I have problem with someone? Do I have problem with myself? Do I have anger? Uh, do I have sins, adultery? Because of my fear of some people, they fear they have no money, so they uh, do s terrible things to commit sins in order to get money. So be that came because of this, the worry about money. So when we have all, any kind of these sins, we say, Lord, I can trust in you when I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be given to me, that you will bless me, you will help me. So I believe that you can overcome this problem. You will provide for me, you will help me. So that's very important to believe in the provision of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be given to us. So He will give all these things to me so I don't have to worry, I don't have to feel bad, I don't have to lose hope. I can follow God, obey God, and God will bless me. Now for myself, I have experienced different times in my life that I was, you know, almost out of money, out of money. but God provides for me. And God provides for me now that I can go to different countries for ministry and have training over different parts of the world. So these are the gifts of God. When we love God, God will provide for us that we can believe in God and trust in God that He will open the way for us. Then we have the confidence. Yes, I can put down those worries. I can put down those sins. So usually the bondage of evil spirit came from sins, negative emotions, adultery, uh, worries, uh, or unforgiveness. That would say if we don't forgive, then it's us who lose the blessings of God. Why should I not forgive because this person has sinned I don't have to you know hate him I can forgive him and when I forgive him I set myself free and I try to help this person to overcome his sins but if he's not willing to change his lifestyle it's his problem but I still pray for him and try to help him try to be nice to him and love him but if he doesn't change I can stay being free and joyful and forgive him and bless him so we don't we decide not to let any sin and then after that, the sins problem and the relationship with God, and then we can stay in a strong presence of God, to love God all the time. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Spend longer time. And then when we pray to God for a longer time, and then we can drive out the demons. We don't have to spend a long time driving out the demons. 
we want to spend more time loving God and believing that God is loving us. The Lord is loving me. The Lord is blessing me. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. I enjoy you. I love you. I adore you. So we can stay in the presence of God. And then, once in a while, we, in Jesus' name, we cast out the demons. And then when we have confidence, yes, God will drive out the demons. Demons have no power in me, no authority in me, and then they will leave. Sometimes it doesn't leave right away because people cannot put down all the negative thinking and thoughts uh, and, or their negative lifestyle. Then we ask God to forgive us and help us so that we can put down all these negative things so that we can drive out the demons quickly. So I encourage you to not to let any uh, the devil have any foothold in our life and then when we spend long time praising God, after we praise God for a long time, the presence of God will come stronger and then we can cast out the demons. And then uh, every day after that, gradually the demons will go away. But if we have strong faith in God and good relationship with Him, the demons can go away right away. But many times the demons don't go away right away because people still have sins and worries and negative thinking. Okay, and the question is how to restore a pastor who has backslidden. Um, we, first, we want to listen to the pastor, what has happened. Uh, it could be very often, it could be money problem, it could be sin problem, a family problem, marriage problem. Now, uh, next time we can talk about marriage, uh, how we can overcome marriage and also how to counsel people with marriage problem and um, <clears throat> so first we want to find out what happened and we want to find out the process not just you know the end result the process is maybe the person yelled at the wife or uh, have hatred or the love of money or the fear that he has no money so all these problems together in the process so when these things happen, what did they do? Some people would just say, Oh, I am um, uh, no way out. I give up. Whatever it is. Or some pastors don't have strength because they don't have a close relationship with God. They're not changed by God. If we have a close relationship with God and are changed by God, then we can tell people how I'm changed. Then they can tell people, how I can have the joy of the Lord, I have the strength of the Lord, I have uh, all the blessings of the Lord, then He can change people. If a person is not changed by God, it's very hard for him to do ministry. So we find out where the problems are, the sins and the relationship, the emotions, uh, his lifestyle, his relationship with God, his strength from God, his experience of ministry. So what are the problems? And then we want to restore them one by one. So does he want to go back into ministry? Uh, if he still has the heart to go into ministry, then we help the person to restore gradually, uh, step by step, to restore this thing before he goes back into ministry. So he needs to restore his lifestyle, his relationship with God, uh, and to overcome the sins before he can start ministry again. Ministry does require the relationship with God so that we can kind have of strength, and also very important to see how wonderful God is. Now many people do ministry by, by, by the law. They'll say, obey the Lord, uh, obey the Lord, read the Bible, pray. Uh, you didn't do it, you didn't do it well. It's always telling people what to do, what to do. But as you remember in the first session, I talked about how we can tell people, God is very happy to bless you. When you pray to Him, He has all kinds of blessings He wants to pour into your life. And the Bible is full of the promises of God. If you read the Bible and believe in the Bible, then when you follow the Bible, the blessings of God will come to you. So the Bible is a book of treasure. When you follow God, we believe in God, then all this treasure will come to you. So we encourage people by the grace of God, by the blessings of God, all the wonderful things God uh, has promised us. So we can hold on to this, and then we can have strength and uh, blessings of God and our life will go higher and higher and we can bless people. So we want to motivate people with the grace of God. And then people will have motivation. They say, yes, what I do, 
God is very happy. God is happy with what I do. God is pleased with what I do and God will reward me. This way, people would have positive motivation and not negative uh, pressure to obey, but positive motivation. With pastors too, we need that too. So I hope you watch this video again and remember this. And uh, it's not by the law that we have strength. It's by the grace of God that we have strength. So I hope um, that I answer all the questions. So are there any more questions? On the five steps for victory, uh, I'm aware that my wife don't support me in ministry. I have tried all the ways, but she's not ready to change. What next step can I take? Okay, now for this person, uh, then I think first is a relationship with the wife. So we'll talk about that in the marriage, about marriage, because um, first, there must be some problem with the relationship. Uh, you remember in the first session we talked about words of grace and words of law. Let me turn back uh, to that slide. Okay, so here is words of grace. We need to learn to say words of grace to our wife and our family members and our church members all the time. God loves you, you are wonderful. And really say it sincerely and count uh, the good things of the person, count the good things of the wife. He, she has done so much, I am so thankful to you. Uh, you, you have tried your best and I have failed many times. Please forgive me. So these are words of grace. And then we need to have words of the law, you know, motivate people, uh, how to motivate people to obey the law and how to handle certain problems. So the way we do is like this, that we say, uh, I'm sorry for my sins. I want to build up the relationship again. Are you willing to do it? And you can tell me what I can do. You can tell me how I can improve, how I can, uh, you know, did I listen to you? Now, very often men don't learn to listen. Uh, it's very hard for men to listen. Now women have problem listening too, but men have greater problem. So we can ask the wife, please tell me how I can improve. And, um, and then when, uh, when there is communication, the willingness to communicate. Now I'm a very busy pastor. I have so much to do. I want to write books. I want to write in Chinese and in English. There's so much that God has given me. I want to write all this. God has given me a continual source of, of ideas how to bless people. And I thank God for that. God has given me so many good uh, information, information and ways to help people. And I don't want to waste those things. So I can write all day long. But I still spend time with my wife to communicate and encourage. And some people might say, when then you're wasting time with your wife. I say no. Because when I have a good relationship with her, then she's supportive of my person, of my ministry, then we are one unit and she will give me ideas that will be helpful to my ministry. And she's very happy to help me in my ministry and to do the ministry together. That way, because of the time I have with her, because wives need time needs time of communication and caring and loving now for men men don't need that much men needs work men needs to find some direction so when men realize that women needs time and communication and understanding and care and love then we will talk to them and care about them and listen to them and respond to them and then they will love us and respond to us and uh, and then the, we can build up the relationship and then the next step is to build up the ministry that we can say with words of grace how to encourage her to be supportive of ministry uh, you know God is very happy if the two of us can serve together 
then God will reward you, God will be pleased with you. Now, so this is grace, to motivate with the grace of God. God will be very happy that you are supportive of a ministry that we serve together and you have great rewards in heaven and you have great rewards in this world and also I will be very happy and I have more strength and I, I will be very thankful to you. So these are words of grace to motivate the wife. Instead of saying, you didn't support me, you're not a good wife, you're not a good pastor's wife. These are words of the law and it doesn't help. It just breaks, uh, you know, ruins the relationship. Instead, we should use words of uh, grace. Now, just now I said that words of the law can ruin relationship. When we say, you didn't do a good job, you're not a good wife, these are words of the law of accusation. It will ruin relationship. So we want to build up good relationship and say, uh, how can I relate to you better? How can I listen to you? Please tell me what's in your heart and, I, and I'm willing to tell you what's in my heart that we can communicate. And one thing is, pastor need to be willing to listen to the wife and communi communicate together and to be willing to really take the ideas, the suggestions of the wife seriously. Now, I have good ideas for ministry. But my wife still gives me good ideas. I will not say to her, I have good ideas already, I don't need your ideas. I will always say to her, thank you, thank you for giving me good ideas. Because we all need better ideas. And sometimes a woman can have a different perspective. So we need to respect the woman and say, you are important to me. You know, this is how we encourage people all the time. You are important to me, your ideas are important to me, and your participation is important to me. And I'm very happy that we can serve God together. And God is very happy. So I hope we can serve together. I have sins, I have failures, please forgive me so we can work together and we can have a good marriage and work together. Okay? So we, we don't try to change the wife. We try to understand the wife. Listen to the wife. Be kind to the wife to change her. So we always change with grace, with love, not with commandment. We don't say, wife change. You have to support me. That way is the law. The law then she feels pressure. Now I hope you understand. The law gives pressure. Grace gives motivation. We don't motivate people with the law. I hope today everyone here is motivated by the grace of God. That we learn to be motivated by the grace of God instead of by the law. That way every day we say, I'm serving God with joy and God is happy with me. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, so do you have any more questions? Now we can pray. If you have any questions, you can still ask. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, because you are a loving Father and you always appreciate what we do for you. You appreciate our heart for you. Whenever we are repentant, you are very happy. Whenever we love you, you are very happy. Whenever we obey you and serve you, you are very happy so we can serve you with joy and peace and strength and motivation. Oh Lord, it's so wonderful to serve you. You are good Lord. Lord, please forgive our sins. So very often we push people to serve. We push people to do things. We tell people to do things. We accuse people when they don't do things. Please help us to change that and not to use the law because we are not under the law. Even though we obey the law, we are under the grace of God. So we want to be motivated by the grace of God and we want to motivate people with the grace of God. We want to appreciate people more. We want to uh, be supportive of people and say you are doing well and God is using you. It's so wonderful. Thank you, Father. Help us to relax in you and just enjoy you. Enjoy God. Enjoy the blessings of God. Enjoy God's help. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. It's so wonderful to have you. It's so wonderful to enjoy you. It's so wonderful to be motivated by you. And whatever we do for God, you're very happy. So we want to serve you with a uh, joyful heart, with strength, 
with motivation. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. It's so wonderful to serve you. Hallelujah. You're a joyful God and a powerful God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. And fifth lesson, have victory over all sins with God's help. So today I go through the, uh, the main lessons. Uh, so have victory over all sins with God's help. John 5, 14, Jesus said to the man uh, who was, Jesus healed him of 38 years of sickness. And then Jesus said to him, stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. So here Jesus said, if you sin, something worse will come to you. Now, this is telling us when we repent of our sin, when we ask God to forgive us, it doesn't mean there is no consequence of sin. There are consequences of sin. There is, there are, there is destructiveness of sin. Even when we get the forgiveness of sin. For instance, someone kills someone. He asks God to forgive him. God will forgive him and give him eternal life. He's really sorry. If he's really sorry for God, for, I mean, for his sin and ask God for forgiveness, then God will forgive him and give him eternal life. But he has to go to jail or he might have to face a death sentence. Now, if someone, uh, he has an affair, his wife runs away from him, then now he can ask God for forgiveness, but his family is broken. Even if his wife comes back, there's still a broken relationship, broken hurt feelings that, that could stay in the heart, in the heart of the wife for a long, long time. So any sin, even after forgiveness, still have bad consequences and still have destructiveness. So we need to understand sins have destructiveness. So the questions are, after God forgives us, Will sin bring any kind of damage to our lives? Yes, it will bring damage. It can bring damage to the whole life. Now, some people, they, you know, they, uh, the family, the marriage is broken, the ministry is broken, the trust with people are broken, they have no more friends, they, when they go to church, nobody likes him. So, everything in his life, his work, he, he has no trust, his whole life is broken. So, it can damage his life to the at most. So we need to be very careful not to let sin affect us. Okay, why is there damage after forgiveness? Because sin, now God forgive us is a relationship with God, but still there is a, a the, the sin affect our heart, affect our peace, and affect people's trust of us, affect relationship with people, affect our opportunities of work, of our opportunities in the church, our opportunities in ministry, our opportunities in the future. Like for me, God gives me opportunities to bless many people and I, He has given me many good teachings. I want to guard my life. I don't want anyone to take away, I don't want any sin to take away uh, any good thing from God. So I am very careful to guard my life. And so if I commit a serious sin, I can still have forgiveness and eternal life but it could destroy my ministry and the trust of many people. And also many people will feel very disappointed that they say, well, Pastor, Pastor uh, Yip has failed. Uh, uh, why is there damage after forgiveness? I just answered that. Even after forgiveness of sin, are there consequences of sin? So I said that, yes, there are consequences of sin. Two, when we sincerely repent,